So let's see here. Uh, the words that I want us to know what they are are um, uh, polynomial, Has anyone ever heard of that before? Polynomial, yes, no, no, yes. yes. If you have, that's good. If not, that's normal. All right, this will be the first time you've ever seen it. We're also going to go over a monomial and a binomial. So I'm going to start with what a monomial is. A monomial is a real number a variable or the product of numbers and variables. So does everybody know what a number is? Hopefully Some so. Specific. Does everybody remember what a variable is? Something in a problem that can change, right? We normally use a letter, X, Y, whatever, as a variable. All right, what about product? What is a product? Can be. Because this can be a real number. Y'all said y'all knew what a number was. This could be a variable. You said you knew what a variable was. Or a product of numbers and variables. So what does a product mean? Mm -hmm. Welcome back. Nobody knows what a product is? Okie dokie. So I guess I'm going to make a definition for a product. That's an answer to... A multiplication problem. Whenever you see the word product, you ought to think multiply. Product is an answer to a multiplication problem. What's the answer to an addition problem? Sum means we're adding numbers. Answer to a subtraction problem. Mm -hmm. So sum lets you know you're adding. Difference lets you know you're subtracting. Product lets you know you're multiplying. Answer to a division problem. Quotient. Quotient. Sum, difference, product, quotient. So what we need to know here for a monomial, it can be a number, it can be a variable, or it can be numbers and variables multiplied together. All right? You have seen numbers and variables multiplied together, but you typically have called that a term. Three or more terms. Now... Technically, a monomial is a polynomial. Like a polynomial is all of these encompass a polynomial. But we call it, when it's one term, we just call it a monomial. When it's just two terms, we call it a binomial. When it's three or more, we don't have a name for it, so those are all polynomials. So what we're going to be working with 
for the next little bit is these kinds of polynomials. All right? Eight plus fourteen x. Does everybody see how that's two terms? Eight plus fourteen x. X plus. Y. X plus y. It's a binomial. Two terms. Sixty-two plus fourteen x y to the twentieth. Sixty-two plus fourteen x y to the twentieth. How many terms is that? Just two. They're being separated by this addition sign. Addition or subtraction separates your terms. All of these are being multiplied together. This is a product of numbers and variables. So this is a monomial. This is a monomial. Added together makes it a binomial. That's pretty good. So what is, that looks pretty good. What is like 14 plus 8x minus... 14 plus 8x minus, can I go 5y? Because if you just leave a 5, then these would have been like terms that you could have combined to make a binomial. But here are these like terms. Do you have anything that can combine? No. How many terms does it have? Three. Three terms. Oh, yeah, because there's a 14, then it's separated with an 8x, then it's separated with a negative 5y. But we don't use that word. Okay? Poly is multiple. So a polynomial, um, one thing that we need to talk about next is the degree of a polynomial. So you've heard of degree before. When you think degrees, what do you think? <laughs> okay, that's one kind of degree. When you think degree in math, I think it's uh, yeah. that you think about temperature degrees, you can think about angles as degrees. This is even a different kind of degree. Okay? So if I ask you... What's the degree of a polynomial? I'm really asking what's the highest and I'm going to I'm going to word this correctly. So I'm looking for The highest exponent Okay, let me let me go let me do this again. Sorry. Again, first time I've ever taught it this way. Or first time I've ever taught algebra one. So let's say the degree of the polynomial is the term with the Highest exponent sum. And you'll see why I had to be careful with um, the definition in just a second. This is really not hard. It should be something that you all like. I'm sorry I'm boring you. Okay. This... This is a polynomial. This polynomial is just a monomial, though. It's one term. What is the degree of this monomial, or the degree of this polynomial? Two. two. Its degree is two, because the highest exponent is a 
two. So it's a degree two polynomial. If I ask you for 17x to the 85th power, what's the degree of this polynomial? 85, because that's the highest exponent. All right, if I ask you for um, 3x to the 5th, y to the 2nd, This is where it's, right, this is where I messed up before. Most of the time when you're going to be working with polynomials, they're only going to have one variable in them, just an x or just a y. But technically, we can have polynomials that have multiple variables like this. And the degree of this polynomial, we have to add those exponents together because they're in the same term. See how this is only one term? So we would add those exponents together to get a degree 7 polynomial here. Pretty good with that? All right, let me go here. If I had x to the third plus 5x squared minus 7x plus 11, this is a polynomial. It has four terms. What would be the degree of this polynomial? Three. Three. Because these exponents don't get added together because they're in separate terms. You see how this is a term by itself? It's degree three. This term is by itself. It's degree two. This one is degree one. What about 11? What degree is 11? Zero. All right. There is no variable to an exponent, so it's a degree zero. Because it's always the degree of the variables. So here's where we're going to get a little tricky here. Every term actually does have a variable x. But what is x to the zero power? What's anything to the zero power? One. We learned that right before we got out for Christmas. So x to the 0 is the same thing as 1. 11 times, 11 times 1 is 11. So this term has a power of 0. So you don't have to know all that right now. You just need to know if it doesn't have a variable, it's degree of 0. So degree 3, degree 2, degree 1, degree 0, which of those is the highest one, that would be the three. So when there's, a, when there's a variable beside a whole number that understood is one, and this whole number is zero? Is that right? Because I didn't take a good enough picture. Ignore. Here, let me erase it. You go happier? I have a monomial that's seven. What is its degree? Zero. zero. You can never have a polynomial with lower than degree zero. So what if it's seven you can't have no x negative four? Not in a polynomial. Then it becomes a rational function because the negative exponent goes to the denominator. Okay. We're not going to that right now. What is 7x negative 4th? 7x to the negative 4th? Yeah. This is not a polynomial. Because this can be rewritten as 7 over x to the 4th. Negative exponent can go to the denominator. And now this is a rational function. It's a fraction. It's not a polynomial. It's a different kind. It's got a different graph. So, you have fractions in? Can you have fraction <laughs> exponents or fraction numbers? Like, could you have three halves x to the fifth? Yeah. Yep, that's fine. Okay. We just don't want the x in the denominator. X can't be on the bottom.
Alright, so our next vocabulary word, the next thing we're going to look at, is called standard form of a polynomial. So what is standard form? Every term must be written in descending order according to their degree. Now that's real fancy. What are they saying? You know how we were looking for the degree of each individual term? Mm -hmm. Well, to be in standard form, it must be descending. What does descending mean? Going down. So we're going to start with our highest degree term on the left, and we're going to work to the lowest degree term on the right, and we're going to go in order from highest to lowest. So when I look here, what is my highest degreed term? There's a degree 4 term, and it would be positive 6x to the 4th. Right, that's my highest That's my highest powered term. Okay, what's the next highest powered term? X, x to the 3rd. Alright, and the sign in front of it has to go with it. So that's not just an x to the 3rd, it's a negative x to the 3rd. You know what I'm saying? We're rearranging this. Oh my gosh, you're going to kill me. Okay, so I've got the third degree term. What's the next highest degree? Negative 3x squared. What's the next highest degree term? Seven plus seven. And it's positive. Even though there's no plus in front of it, it's understood to be positive. Plus 7x. And then what's the next highest degree term? It's negative 5. So now I've now put this polynomial in standard form. Now we want to write 4x plus 3x squared plus 2x plus x squared plus 5 in standard form. So this is a polynomial. So we want to put it in order from the highest degree to the lowest degree. So what's the highest degree term that we see? This is degree 2, this is degree 2. Are they the same variable? Raised to the same power? So we can combine their coefficients. 3x squared and 1x squared is 4x squared. Now I've gotten rid of both of my power 2 terms. Now I'm going to look. What's the next highest power that I have? This one is x to the first. This one is x to the first. They're the same variable to the same power. Combine them. 6x. Then I'm left with 5. It has nothing like it. So it comes down at the end. So this is my polynomial. It's in standard form, and we have combined the like terms. Questions? You see how all the tools that we went over before, combining like terms, is going away. We're doing it in a different place now. We're still using that skill. Guess what other skill you're going to be using before long? Getting a variable by itself. That's coming. So what does this tell me to do? What is the what is the sum? What do you guys think sum means? The answer to an addition problem. So they want me to add these things together. So here's what you got to do. I'm going to take 
4x squared plus 2x minus 3. And I'm going to add all of 3x squared plus 6. So when I'm adding everything, that's really not that big of a deal. Because if I add 3x squared, that's a positive 3x squared. If I add 6x, I'm sorry, if I add 6, that's still just 6. And then guess what this has turned into? The exact same problem you just had. Combine your like terms. Okay? Now the thing that can be confusing is look at this one. This one is a difference. This one is trickier. Not by much. It's one thing trickier. This is a polynomial, and I'm subtracting a, another polynomial. I'm subtracting all of this. So what do you have to do when you're subtracting three different things in this case? I have to distribute that negative. When you distribute a positive, it doesn't change the signs. When you distribute a negative, it does. So this becomes a negative 3x squared. Negative times positive is a negative 5x. Negative times a negative is a positive 8. The first polynomial is unchanged. And that's the only difference between those. Then the next step is the same. Combine your like terms. So here I'm going to combine these. 7x squared. There's nothing like 2x. Negative 3 plus 6. Different signs. Subtract. 6 and 3 is 3. Keep the sign of the dominant number. 6 is dominant. It's positive. My answer is positive. So this would be the top one. That's the sum. And you can do this one, right? The same thing. Whoop.